Hey, what's good, YouTube? This specific video is really near and dear to my heart because as a business strategist and business coach, um, my whole mission is to help people to become the entrepreneurs of their lives. And as a coach, my best interests are your best interests. Like I'm vested in your outcomes. And if you as a client, if you do not succeed, I do not succeed. But if you do succeed, if you do win, I win. So for me, when I talk about the three possible outcomes that could come from coaching, the only possible outcome that I believe is possible and is necessary and is valuable is the outcome called cultivation. But unfortunately in coaching, you have two other uh, types of outcomes. You have the ability to constrain people, which means you keep them where they're at, or you can cripple them, which means you hurt them and they never really get to grow anyhow, anyway. And so in this video, I wanna talk about those three specific outcomes of coaching, cultivation, constrainment, and crippling so that you can understand that whenever you go out and hire a coach or go and work with somebody, you can understand and identify whether or not they're helping you, keeping you in the same place, or hurting you. So without further ado, I'm gonna get into the first benefit or the first type of outcome of coaching, which is cultivation. As I mentioned, the first and really only type of outcome of coaching that I care about or that I think is, is viable is what I call cultivation. And when you cultivate your client, you help them to grow. That's just the sheer definition of cultivation. And this is important because whenever a client, whenever somebody hires a coach, somebody like me, they hire me to help them to achieve whatever business goals they may have. So in order for my clients, in order for people to achieve their goals, they have to get outside of their comfort zone. They have to grow. They have to do things they've never done before because by doing things they've never done before, by thinking differently, it's gonna force them to get into another frame of mind to help them to develop not only personally, but help them to develop professionally as well. So when you're working with a coach, the only outcome <laughs> that is viable, the only outcome that you should be looking for is cultivation. You don't pay people like me. You don't hire other coaches just to say the same or to even get be worse off. Like you hire coaches to help you. So the first uh, and only type of outcome that is that you should really pay attention to when you're working with a coach is cultivation. But unfortunately, there's two other types of outcomes that you can uh, achieve when you work with a coach. So those are going to be constrainment and crippling. And next up, I'm gonna talk about what it means to be constrained by a coach. The word constrain essentially means to hold in place, to remain the same, to prevent movement in any direction. And so when you think about this word constrainment and applying that to a coach, when a coach constrains you, that means they just keep you in the same place. You don't progress forward, nor do you progress backwards. But the really deceptive idea behind being constrained by a coach is the illusion of progress. And I call this the pendulum movement of coaching. And this is where people provide you with I call fortune cookie business advice, or they just give you a little bit of information that you may think is gonna help you, but really all it does is it helps you move side to side. So you feel like you're going places, but in all actuality, it doesn't improve your bottom line. You're not actually moving toward your goal. You're just doing work. You're just being busy. And being busy does not necessarily mean that you're gonna progress forward. And so this is really tough to feel because there's an illusion of progress. But at the end of the day, if you're not getting closer to your goals, if you're not achieving your business goals, then you're not really moving. You're just kind of moving side to side. And the scary thing about pendulums is that they move 
all the time, but they never move forward or backwards. They're just kind of just moving in place. So whenever you're working with a coach, you have to make sure that you're not being constrained. You just have to make sure you're moving forward. And so that's the second possible outcome you can get when you're working with a coach. But the next uh, type of outcome is the most nefarious. And it's something that I think occurs more and more within this industry. And that is the outcome of being crippled by a coach. Now, when people think of somebody who's been crippled, you kind of imagine somebody who's been injured. They might not be able to walk or move functionally. And you can kind of apply that idea to the world of coaching. And when you're being crippled by a coach, you're actually being damaged. But oftentimes you don't know this because you're being given the appearance that you're being helped. So a good analogy would just to be imagine uh, hiring somebody to move you up to the mountaintop. That mountaintop is your goal. Now, these coaches, they may know the easiest or shortest path to get to the mountaintop. But instead of taking you that route, they prefer to take you the mo through the most dangerous, the most arduous, and the most difficult path. Because they know that when you go through this extremely difficult path, you're going to encounter more obstacles that, of course, they can help you to circumvent for a convenient charge. And because your coach is exposing you to more danger than you would need to face or that you would face if they would have just given you the right help or the right uh, materials you needed or paid for, um, you would have been cultivated. You would have actually gotten to your goal without of suffering as much damage as you've uh, experienced. And so that's how a lot of coaches cripple you is they keep you dependent upon them. It's not that they actually may physically hurt you, but instead of getting you from point A to point B in the quickest fashion, they keep you trapped within an endless cycle of products and services, and you never actually develop the ability to grow on your own and to become independent of them, um, which is where you need to be. And so this is just very, very dangerous, and it's more and more common here nowadays. And I've experienced this personally where I've hired people to help me, but instead of giving me the real advice that I needed to, they just give me little bits and crumbs that just have me running around in circles. And if I wanted to level up, I would have to pay them even more. And so I became crippled because I was became more dependent upon them. And so once I figured that out, <laughs> I abandon those coaches or those programs that I was doing and uh, either found somebody else who could really cultivate me or found out that I had to learn the hard way and um, move forward on my own um, own skill to accomplish my goal. So yeah, that kind of wraps up these three types of outcomes. So either you're going to be cultivated by a coach, you're going to be constrained by a coach, or you'll be crippled by a coach. And it's just super, super important that you make sure that your coach is cultivating you because if they're not helping you to grow, red flag. If they're just keeping you in the same place, red flag. If they're just keeping you dependent upon them and purposely create problems for you that you don't need, that's an even bigger red flag. So these are just kind of like the three possible outcomes that you can get from coaching. So my question for you today is, does your coach cultivate, constrain, or cripple your growth? I'm really curious to know your thoughts on this, so please be sure to drop your comments below. Furthermore, if you want to become the entrepreneur of your life, you can start this process today by subscribing to this channel. Also, please be sure to click the notification bell to be alerted for whenever new content drops. Until next time.